Hello and welcome this Thursday afternoon. It is my prayer and my hope that you had a fantastic Thursday. And guess what? It's going to even get better because we're going to share some things with you tonight that will help you be all that God has ordained for you to be. I'm Bishop Van Sharp, the pastor and founder of Newness of Life Christian Center. Thank you for thank you so much for taking out the time of your busy, busy schedule to watch us here on Facebook Live. And I need you right now to text somebody, call somebody, email somebody. As you chime in, give others an opportunity to hear what you're hearing so they can know what you know and be able to go where you're going. You don't want to go higher and go into a greater deliverance process without taking other people with you. Everything that happens good in your life, you want it also to happen good in the life in the lives of somebody else. So it is my prayer tonight that you will text somebody, call somebody, email somebody, get them to subscribe, get them to uh, do whatever it takes to get on Facebook Live right now and hear what thus said the Lord. Normally, amen, a lot of times we are led by the Spirit to play a song, but tonight, again, because we're talking about what? Owning property and starting businesses, we want to take out this time right now and pray and go right into tonight's teaching because we know that there's some very, very bright and brilliant people watching tonight. I want to give a shout out already to Vincent Bellamy, as well as your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy, Mother Evangeline Whitaker, Rachel Whitaker, amen, as well as Brianna Whitaker and amen, Low Whitaker. Thank God for all of you. I mean, Rachel Moses, Brianna Moses, and Low Moses, amen calling her by a maiden name rather than a married name. Amen. But we thank God for, amen, Sister Rachel Moses. Amen. One that served ministry, amen, for a long time along with her mom and dad before he went on to be with the Lord. Let's pray real quickly and go right into tonight's teaching. Again, don't even waste your time calling nobody, texting somebody, emailing somebody who's not astute, who's not looking to be informed, Rather than just getting inspired and feeling emotions, we want people to be enlightened. We want their eyes of their understanding to come open, and we're going to give them some good, solid information that will help them, help them own property. If you know somebody who is in an apartment but believing God for a house, or if you know somebody, glory to God, who want better in life, those are the people that I want you to contact and make that connection with. Let's pray now. Father, I thank you for these bright, brilliant minds and hearts that have chosen to tune in tonight. I know they haven't chosen to tune in by coincidence or happenstance, but you have strategically directed them to tune on, to log on, to watch this tonight, be it by Facebook or YouTube. We thank you, Father. We glorify you tonight for thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips, a relevant, like changing word, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right, let's go to Psalms 105 and verse number 37. Shout out to Wanda Brown and all that watch party with her on tonight. Uh, Prophetess Mary Fleming, and amen. And Linda Brinson, shout out to you, amen. And some of you need to watch her, amen, on her uh, program and see her, Facebook. amen, Facebook. worshiping on Facebook and watch her, amen, in worship as she lifts up those banners, amen, and glorifies God, amen. All right, let's go to Psalms 105, verse 37. Psalms 105, verse 37 says, he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. So how did God do this? God did this by his own right hand, by his own strength. He brought the nation of Israel out from under Pharaoh's strong, restricted hands into the wilderness and from the wilderness into the promised land. He didn't bring them out weak. He brought them out strong and he brought them out with silver and he brought them out with gold ready to do what? 
come out from under the hand of Pharaoh, which was slavery and bondage, come out of Egypt, which is a place of limitation, and come into a land flowing with milk and honey. So God wanted them to inherit land, to be property owners. Every last one of those tribes, God wanted to give them some property. You know the story of Joshua and Caleb? And we know that Caleb had been given a word from God through Moses when he was in his 40s, but it didn't happen till he was 85. So 40 something years later, he reminds Joshua of the promise of some land, of owning some property. And he said, as my strength was then, so is it now. He was ready to go in and possess or take his land. Now, I'm going to tell you, God wants you to own property and God wants you to be a business owner. Amen. Because God wants to empower us. Thank God and a special shout out and a special salute to all those NBA players that took a stand, even in this case, amen, of the black young man, amen, uh, Blake being shot seven times. Thank God, amen, that these young NBA players took a stand. All those teams decided not to play on last night and then decided not to play on tonight, and it has triggered over into the uh, NBA. NHL, as well as tennis players deciding not to play, women. as well as uh, women basketball players deciding not to play, amen, as well as baseball players deciding not to play. Why? Because we're saying we've had enough of injustices, amen, we want what belongs to us. Black people deserve to be treated fair, and our lives do indeed matter. We need to understand that God wants to do something powerful in this hour. He wants to bring people into their more season. And every politician and every white racist or supremacist that is thinking that he or she can stand in the way will not be able to block what God is doing, especially when we put our hope, our trust in God. We know that men need a new heart. They need a change of heart. And only God can change man from the inside out. That's what God wants to do. And that's what he has done for those of us who are saved, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, amen, and verse number 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, behold, all things become new. Now, remember I said the wealth of a nation is in the land or in land ownership. What did I say the wealth of a nation is in? It's in land ownership, real estate owning property. This, we said, that we're believing God for is a supernatural land ownership. See, those of us who are saved, who are born again, we don't let a lack of money deter us off the promise. The promise has been made to Abraham and to Abraham's seed that they would, what? Possess the land. God took Abraham took him, at that time his name was Abram, brought him out from among his country and among his kindred and told him that he was going to give him the land, even to the great river Euphrates. All of that would be his. Amen. God blessed the man, made him a very wealthy man and gave him property. Before he didn't even have a place to even put his foot on. He did not own any property, but because he was chosen by God, God wanted him to own property. You, sir, you, ma'am, have been chosen by God, and God wants you to own land. He got a house with your name on it. He got a house that won't add any sorrow to your life. The Bible said the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich, and he added no sorrow with it. So there's not going to be sorrow in this house that God's going to bless you with. He's Jehovah Jireh, he's your provider, and he wants to give you things that you will have to glorify him for. He said, I give you houses you did not build. I give you wells you did not dig. He says, all nations will call you blessed. You meditate on it. It's in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Now, let's go further. We said, we just don't want to be on, O in the land, but we want to own, O-W-N, the land. Now we said you must guard your heart, but
by keeping positive affirmations in your heart and your mind. All right, let's go to Judges chapter one, verses one through four. Judges chapter one, verses one through four. Shout out to Yvette Wheeler on tonight. Good to know you're tuning in and watching this. This is for serious people. This is for people who just don't want to walk and talk with the status quo. It's for people who understand there's more to me and you than meets the eye, that God got some big stuff in store for us. Shout out to Elder Marvin White. Good, Elder. Good to know you're watching, sir. Amen. Amen. And I uh, know you, you, you're a LeBron James fan and the Lakers and all that. Amen. But thank God for the stand that these, these athletes have taken to not play. Amen. Because this is a serious, more weightier matter when a man is shot seven times in his back. That's some serious stuff. Amen. And I know Ella White knows that. Amen. Shout out to Deborah Taylor on tonight. Amen. As well as Melody Hatchell. Good to know you all are watching. Now let's go to Judges chapter one, verses one through four. And it says, now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass. Joshua is dead now. Moses already died. Joshua is dead now. That the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah, which means praise, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into, watch this, his hand. This is Judges chapter one, verse two. Please make a note of this verse. It said, I have delivered the land into his hand. So the land has been delivered into the hands of praise. Watch this. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I will likewise would and I likewise would go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands. And they slew them in Bezek, 10,000 men. Now, last week, and you go back over this in Facebook and look at last week, part two. We're on part three now. We said that the land had been delivered into the hands of Judah and Simeon. Simeon means to listen or to hear. Shout out again to Melinda Bird, Ab, uh, that's a aid. Abe Hyman, mm -hmm. thank you for watching tonight. And Ladorius, way to go, Ladorius. And Tiffany, way to go, Tiffany White. Shout out to you and your husband, John, and the kids. Amen. Now, listen, these are the things we said that it takes to get the land. It requires faith. Number two, confession. Number three, your praise. And number four, listening to the Lord. What did I say? To get your land, it requires faith. Your confession, that's speaking the word, saying, hey, there's some land with my name on it. God, I thank you for the land. I thank you for my new house. I thank you for it. I bless you. Keep confessing the word of God. Amen. Your praise and listening to the Lord. Now, I get into that, listening to the law part of, in, in a few minutes, a little bit more, as we talk about businessmen. All right? Now, the word businessman is the Hebrew word that literally means a man of faith. So if we talk about owning property and starting businesses, what are we saying? To be a businessman, take being what? A man of faith. So every time when somebody says, are you a businessman? You ought to say, yes, I'm a man of faith. I believe God. I believe what I cannot see to be my reality. I walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by his faith. Now listen, all of this, all of this about you getting your land and starting your business it's based on God's favor. It's based on the favor of God. Somebody says, how are you going to get the land? Because God going to favor me. I have favor with God. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. That means God's favor is on me. That means God's good hand is on my life. If you're saved, you expect favor to, to, to open up doors for you that no man can shut and shut doors for you that no man can open. You expect the favor of God to show up and show out in your life. One preacher said that the favor of God is when God lets somebody else use their power, 
their influence and their prosperity to help you advance in life. So God will let somebody else use their power, their ability, and their finances to help you advance in life. That's God's favor, being in your life and on your life. All right, listen, Genesis 12. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12 and verse number two. We know in the King James, it says that God tell Abraham that I'm going to make of you a great nation. So I'm going to make your name great. And he tells him, amen, that everybody that bless him, he'll bless them. Everybody that curse him, he'll curse them. Shout out to Demetrius, amen, as well as Pastor Janelle Person. Good to know you're watching tonight. And Erwin Burke, good to know you're watching, Brother Burke. Way to go, amen, as well as Larry Whitehead. Good to know you guys are watching. This is for serious-minded people. This is the people, again, that want more than just the status quo. We're going to show you how to do it. You're going to get it by the favor of God. Go to Psalms 44, and let's look at verse, uh, I'm sorry, Genesis. let me read Genesis 12 and 2 in the Amplified Classic. Genesis 12 and 2 in the Amplified Classic. Again, I'm talking about the favor of God is going to be on your life so much so that you're going to get a house and it won't cost you what it costs everybody else. Everything that I've ever purchased as it relates to land, I didn't have to pay what others might would have had to pay. For the 1.4 acres of property our church owned, we didn't have to pay for what others would have to pay. For the 11 acres, we didn't have to pay what others would have to pay. For where I live at right now, I didn't have to pay what others would have to pay, not because I did anything crooked, but because I have the favor of God on my life, even for my books that are written. I don't have to pay what others have to pay because I get what is called the favor of God. I don't have to make that happen. God has given me favor. And if you are saved, you have favor. That means somebody will work with you that won't work with everybody else. Somebody will help you like it would be a supernatural thing going on in your life. That's the favor of God. Hallelujah. Listen to that song, I mean, Genesis 12 and 2 in the Amplified Classic. It says this to Abraham. God is talking to Abraham. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you. This is God saying to Abraham. I will bless you with abundant increase of favors, yes, favors, more than one, favor after favor after favor after favor is coming on your life, favor after favor after favor after favor is coming on my life, some of you need to write that down there and say, I believe God for favor after favor after favor, it's time for us to trust what he said, God said, I bless you with abundant increase of favors, watch this, he didn't just say, I bless you with abundant fa of favors. He said, abundant increase of favors, meaning that more and more will start happening, that God will increase your life more and more. That's what I told you. If you are saved and you are part of Newness of Life Christian Center, or if you're not a part of Newness of Life Christian Center, I told you that this year, 2020, is your more season. It's your season of more, where God wants to do more in your life. Shout out to Captain Medlin. Thank you for watching tonight, amen, as well as Jean Drone watching tonight. Good to know you're watching, Sister Jean, and Patricia Burton. Thank God for you, amen. All right, now, let's look at Psalm 44 and 3. Let's look at Psalm 44 and 3, amen. We're talking about what? What are we talking about? Um, Owning property and starting businesses. God wants you to own some property. The wealth is in the land. God promised your land. See, a lot of people, they, they get saved. You know what they believe God for? A car. Nothing wrong with a car. But that ain't, the, that ain't the ultimate promise. The promise was you will own property. You will possess the land. You will drive out previous tenants and take over the land. That was the promise that God gave to Abraham and to his seed. Hallelujah. That God would bless you with some land. You're going to be a land owner. Let me say it again. I said, you're going to be a land owner. You're going to own property. 
you are going to sign that deed to that house. And you're going to get that house. You're going to pay that house off. And if you want another one, you're going to get another one. Amen. Because maybe you want two, one for your child, one for somebody else. Amen. He said, I'll give you houses. Amen. God, 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 listen at me. If these sinners who don't know God, who don't love God, who don't even want to serve God, can have it, why shouldn't we, who say we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, have it? See, one of the things that Facebook Live is causing a lot of people to do is having to sit down and think. Amen? See, because a lot of entertainment is old. Amen? A lot of movies, amen, are just, now they're just beginning to come out with a few, but a lot of them was old, so that entertainment stuff is over. God trying to show you something in the spirit, that it's not just about being entertained by a preacher. It's about being informed by a preacher. It's about him teaching you something, allowing you to apply that information and receive the best in life. Hallelujah. Now watch this, Psalm 44 and 3. Listen to what it said. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. So they didn't get the land by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand, talking about God, God's right hand, and thine arm, God's arm, and the light of thy countenance, God calling his face to shine on you and I. Because thou hast a favor unto them. You see why they got the land? Why did they get the land? Not by their sword, not by their own strength, but because God gave them favor. Now, did they have to fight against the, the, the Canaanites? Yes. Did they have to fight against the Perizzites? Yes. But who helped them win the battle? Who helped them take the land? God did. Because God favored them. And again, they got it because they sent up Judah. They sent up praise. They walked in faith. They confessed the word. They praised God. And they had to listen at God's voice. All right? Now listen, I told you last time, one out of every 35 white persons own or has a business. One out of every 35. One out of every 53 Hispanic persons own or have a business. But here's the bad st uh, statistic. Only one out of every 105 black people owns or has a business. Amen? Did you see what I just said? One out of every 105. Amen? And think about it. Who get all the, a lot of tax breaks? Business people. Amen. Especially if their business become very, very successful. Amen. What was Donald Trump before he became the president? A business person. And he's for businesses. Amen. And we have to understand that God wants you to own property and start businesses. Again now, I'm not telling you to quit your job and start a business without knowing that that business can be successful. You and I can maintain our job and start a business. Amen. In other words, doing something that you know is bringing in consistent income, that's your job, but at the same time, looking forward to starting your own business, amen, doing that like part-time. Did you not know Damon John? Damon John, some of you know him. He's uh, one of the sharks on Shark Tank. Damon John ran FUBU while still working at Red Lobster. The man was working at Red Lobster but was running FUBU. Now, eventually, we know FUBU blew up and all his other business has, has, has blown up and now he's a shark on Shark Tank. But while he was working FUBU, he didn't quit his job at Red Lobster. Amen? He waited and watched and see what the business was doing. And that's how you can do. You can be wise. Amen? In this, because God wants you to what? Own property and start business. All right? Listen, Proverbs 24, 33, and 34 in the Passion Translation. Proverbs 24, 33, and 34 in the Passion Translation says, professional work habits, 
professional work habits. And a lot of us learn professional work habits, first of all, by working for somebody else. Now, the same way you punch a clock, the same way you get up, the same way you do things for working for another man, why in the world do you think when you get your business that you're supposed to be lazy? That's what a lot of people want to start a business for. They think, well, I don't have to work for them people no more. I don't have to work for them, them people no more. They won't be able to tell me what to do. And then you want to be lazy and your business ends up failing. Because why? When you are working for another man, it is to help you develop work habits. There's a time you got to be there on time and punctual. Amen. My wife can tell you, I was never late for my job. That's why I don't like being late for church and late, late, because it's about being professional. Amen. If you're going to deal with business, a lot of business people, they will not respect you if you're not punctual. Amen. We had, had some business to take care of the day at my, at my house. And the main thing I told the man was a time. Amen. And then I got to change the time because something else I had to do in business. We're trying to get this other book out and have to talk to the publisher and, and printer about that. Amen. So that pushed my time back. But he was running late anyway, but we were able to get that time straightened out. Yesterday, I had to go down. No, it was this morning, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. early this morning. I told the gentleman that I had to take care of some business with. I'm going to be there by 9 o'clock. Do not be late. Amen? Elder White, he can verify this. I, I know him and Deacon Gass, and I can verify this. Amen? I showed up one time to take care of some business at our local church, and the person who came out there to do the work for the church ended up giving me $100. Gave me $100. Said, I just want to give $100 to your ministry. Why? Because you came on time. See, people can be so used to other people being late that they think you're going to be late. And you need to show them that you got professional work habits. Listen at me now. Professional work habits prevent what? Poverty. Y'all see that? Proverbs 24, 33, and 34 in the Passion Translation. Look at it down on your screen as you got Facebook. Now, if you don't have Facebook Live, you got to get your Bible out and go and watch it on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you got to get your Bible out. Proverbs 24, 33, and 34 in the Passion Translation says this. Professional work habits prevent poverty from becoming your permanent business partner. And if you put off until tomorrow, the work you could do today, tomorrow never seems to come. You see that? In other words, procrastination will mess you up. A lot of people procrastinate. It's always going to be tomorrow. 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 Next time. Tomorrow. Next time. Tomorrow. Next time. Next time. Tomorrow, next time. And it never seems to come because they don't have professional work habits. If you tell somebody, I'm going to be there at this time, then be there at that time. Because if not, you mess up the, the way they're going to see you and perceive you. They're going to think you're shabby when it comes to business. They're going to think you ain't about nothing when it comes to business. Even Damon John, he was talking about how he decided to hook up with different people as a business partner. He said when people don't show up or when people come and they're not on time, he know he don't want to go in business with them. Y'all didn't get what I just said. Mm -hmm. If they don't show up or they don't come to the meeting on time, they don't want to go into business with them. That's why we come on Facebook Live. We come up here. We come right up on here. We get up here every Tuesday at 7.30, right on time. Get up here every Thursday at 7 o'clock, right on time. And every Sunday morning at 10.15, right on time. Shout out to Donna Davis. Amen. Glad to come. Why? That's a business mindset. You, all of us, difficult. amen, unless there are technical difficulties or something else. All of us need to develop professional work habits. You don't, you don't, if that man hired you to do a job, you should strive to go to that job on time. Hallelujah. I was never late on my job. I didn't play that. Amen. Because it's serious. This man hired me. This person has invested in me, believing in me as an individual. I don't want to mess that up. 
I want them to I want them to ask me when I worked at Consolidated Diesel, uh, the one of the gentlemen that was in charge of hiring people pulled me to the side one day, and he said, "I want to know one thing." He said, "Van, I've been watching you. You're on time. You do your job. You come here." He said, "I want to ask you one question: Are there any more in your church like you?" Y'all didn't get what I just said. He was saying, "Are there any more?" Is there, are there any more people in your ministry that got the same dedication, got the same work ethic that you got? See, when you work on a job and you do it well, you can recommend others and the person will receive your recommendation because they know what kind of worker you are. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Sister Iris, amen, used to do that. She Help uh, some people in our church get a job. Vanita doing the same thing. So Vanita, shout out to you and your husband Vanita. tonight. Vanita Battle and other people. See, when you go on your job and do what you need to do, people start thinking that, hey, we need some more people. Can you recommend somebody? And when people recommend you, you should be a good employee so they won't regret having vouched for you. All right, let me read Isaiah 48 and 17. I got to move on here. Isaiah 48 and 17 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, watch this, which teacheth thee to profit. What does he do? Teach it thee to profit. What I say profit means? To push forward, to make progress. God said, I'm the one who's going to train you, educate you, and teach you how to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. God said, I, I want to teach you this. And that's what he's doing. So I'm going to give you 13 keys that God gave me to teach you so you can profit and have a successful business. And it's going to help you out in every other area of your life. Even if you don't start a business, these points can help you out. I'm telling you, they can help you out. But God wants you to own property. And God shall take over. But I feel this so strong. God wants you to own property, sir. Own property, ma'am. And God wants you to be a successful business person. All right? A man of faith or a woman of faith. God wants you to be successful. He wants whatever your hands touch to prosper, to move forward, to push forward. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's look at 13 keys to successful business. Number one, the first key to successful business is God's voice. Do not try to start a business without hearing from God. You must hear God's voice because if God tell you to do something and you step out and do it, it will not fail. Don't do it because somebody else tried it and they look successful at it. Somebody else tried this and they made a lot of money at it. That ain't why you do it. You hear God's voice. Tell God, God, you want me to start a business? And he'll say, yeah. Give you the name of it. Amen. Give you the strategy in it. Hearing God's voice is key. Listen at Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You listen to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. See, God will speak to you. Amen. See, one of the reasons why I've never been afraid of God providing for me once I left CDC was because God told me to come off the job. If God hadn't have told me to come off that job and go into full-time ministry, I wouldn't have done it. Amen? Now, I know everybody that even if you work a job and you're trying to pastor, you in full-time ministry. What I'm talking about, amen, to just like Jesus told the disciples that were fishermen to come and follow him. That's what he did with me. I was at CDC. I had just been given an opportunity to get a raise. I was excited about my raise, in my car, ready to go home and tell my wife about the raise. The Lord said, Van, I said, what? I want you to come off your job. 
So wait a minute, wait a minute. No, the devil is a lie. The devil talking to me. Amen. To make a long story short, God said, now it's me talking to you. I want you to come off the job in six months. I'm at home told my wife, amen, and the rest is history. To make a long story short, God prompted me because why? He told me to do it. I didn't do it because somebody else did it. I did it because God told me to do it. Same thing I told my brother. I told my brother, I said, yeah, I said, man, you don't want to go into full-time ministry, come off your job based on how many people in the church, because people will come and they go. People get up disgruntled, some upset them, and they leave the church. But I wanted him to understand the voice of God was the key. All right, now let me go to Isaiah 48 and 18. Isaiah 48 and 18 says, All that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had they peace, been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Again, God is telling you, if you had hearkened to my commandments, you would have walked in the peace as a river, the righteousness as the waves of the sea. Now listen at this. The mysteries of God are hidden in Christ. The mysteries of God hidden in Christ are the most valuable, precious, and powerful things in the earth. What did I just say? The mysteries of God hidden in Christ are the most valuable, precious, and powerful things on the earth. The general will of God, the general will of God, we know by the written word. See, the written word that we read on the, in the Bible, that's how we know the general, will, the general will of God. But the specific will of God, we can only know and we know by the voice of the Holy Spirit. See, God specifically said to me, Van, I want you to come off your job, go full-time ministry and preach my gospel. See, that's specific. Like when God spoke to Abraham and told him, well, even in his old age, he and Sarah going to have a child. That's specific. That ain't for everybody. But God saying, in multiplying, I multiply you, and blessing, I'm going to bless you. That's for us who are saved. That's in the written word of God. But the specific word of God came to Abraham that he and Sarah were going to have a child in their old age. The voice of God helps us find out the specific will of God. Hallelujah. See, God can, you can be riding in a, a neighborhood. That's why I told you, if you want to own a house, go into some neighborhoods and everything else, and God may speak to you there and say, that's your house. That's yours. That belongs to you right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Or God may specifically speak to you and say, that building right there, that's yours to start a business. I want you to start a business right there in that building. That's your property. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how God works. He speaks specifically to us and we must hearken to the voice of God. Shout out Linda Walston, as well as Celia Foreman, Teresa Johnson, shout out to you, and Minnie Bullock. All right, now, let, listen. John 14 and 26. Listen at John, St. John, the 14th chapter, verse 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He, talking about the Holy Spirit, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit will speak to us, bring things to our remembrance. So you might just be walking around one day and all of a sudden you say, wait a minute, Pastor said, Bishop Van Sharp said, it's time for me to own my own property. Amen. That's my house right there. See, in other words, it's important that we understand that the first key to successful businesses or successful business is God's voice. Number two, the second key to successful business is demand. You never want to go into any business with a product where there is no demand for it. You got to understand, Dan Locke, who is one of the highest paid and in demand consultants in the real estate business, that's who he is, Dan Locke, and Dan Locke said this, one win in business can make up 
for all your losses. So you want to win in business. You're not going to be in business, amen, very long if you are trying to offer people something where there is no demand. You must find a field in which there is a tremendous need for what you do. Let me say it again. You must find a field in which there is a tremendous need for what you do. For example, you are the you are a dentist, amen. You could probably very easily start a dentist business. Why? Because there's a need for people to take care of their teeth. Or if you were a person that uh uh did like uh what what's the lady name? Amen. I can't think of the name. hair. Uh-uh, that works uh take care of your doctor. Chiropractic. The doctor, no. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of her name right now. Pulley. Dr. Pulley. Amen, Dr. Pulley. Shout out to Dr. Pulley. She started her own business, amen, called uh, Halo Hands. Amen, because she was a doctor and she decided she wanted to help black people who were struggling, be able to take care of their health, take care of their body. Why? There's a need for physical maintenance of the body. So therefore, there's a demand for what she's offering. Listen, you must find a field in which there's a tremendous need for what you do and then become very, very good at fulfilling the need. See, find a need for what you're doing, then become very, very good at fulfilling the need. Mastering what you do must be your focus. Write that statement down. Mastering. What you do must be your focus. In other words, you're a mechanic. You don't want to be just somebody out here doing it. You want to be the best at it. You want to be so good that people start recommending you to work on their car because they know how good you are, which would create what? A demand for what you're doing. And then that demand becomes so great, amen, that, hey, you're going to succeed. Because why? To succeed in business, there must be a demand. The reason why, glory to God, I wrote books because God told me to do it. And I knew that there were a lot of people who were dealing with discouragement. There are people dealing with that right now. Suicidal and everything else. Amen. This first book, the first week and a half, we had sold over 500 of them. Boom, 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 boom. Selling everywhere. Amen. There was a demand for it. That's why I listen at what God tell me to write. Amen. Our book, uh, latest book, you need this right here, just came out, called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. Let me tell you something. There's a demand for this book. People already demand it. We probably have to do another reorder real soon. Amen. Why? Because there's been a demand for it. Amen. And the other one we got coming out that'll be out, amen, within the next uh, few weeks or so, amen, it's called Death a need to understand because so many people don't understand what death is all about. I listen to the Holy Spirit and then you have to understand there must be a demand. There must be a demand. If, if there's nobody buy the books, all you've got, I don't need to keep writing them. But there's a demand. People bump into me all the time. My wife can tell you. They said, man, Bishop Sharp, when are you going to write another book? They ready to read it. I ain't even wrote it yet. They ready to read it. Why? Because there's a demand. Watch this now. Mastering what you do must be your focus. You got to be good at what you do. The money will be the reward. See, the money is the reward of you mastering what you do. When you master what you do, you become very, very good. I'll talk about that. That's another business point. Listen, remember, if there is no demand for you or the product, you are destined to fail. Let me say what I just said. Remember, if there's no demand for you or the product, you're destined to fail. You know why Popeyes keep on making that chicken sandwich? Because there's a demand for it. <laughs> there was no demand for it. You ain't got to worry about it. They ain't going to make no more. Amen. But there's a demand for that chicken sandwich. Listen, business functions and operate by supply and demand. There's a supply that you have. And there's a demand for that supply. It has been said, what you like 
should be your hobby. What the world likes should be your business. Let's say it again. What you like should just be your hobby. But what the world like should be your business. In other words, you should have something that the world want to take on and get it. Victor Hugo, Victor Hugo said, all the forces in the world are not so powerful as an idea whose time has come. See, sometimes you can have an idea, but it ain't time yet. See, there's a book I'm working on right now to ministers. It just ain't time yet. Now, people are already demanding. You know, my brother told me the other day, he said, man, I'm glad about this book. He said, when are you going to write that book on ministers? It ain't the time yet. When it's time, it'll come out. Amen. My wife gave me that relaxation in that years ago when I first was writing my book. She said, look, take your time, relax. Amen. When it's time, it'll be out. Don't, don't worry about it. Amen. And it, it was just, it was the Lord speaking through her. Amen. You understand? Amen. Listen, all the forces of the world are not so powerful as an idea whose time has come. Sometimes you can have an idea that's not time. You got to just put it on the shelf. It's for another time. It's for another season. Amen? Because there's going to be a demand for it later. Y'all know that. Amen? With Shark Tank. You see Shark Tank? Those sharks got the money. And people come there and they say, no. Uh, da, 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 I'm out. And another person said, no. Uh, that's not what I'm dealing with right now. I'm out. And another person said, well, I'm going to invest in that. I, 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 can, I can see how we can make money in it. Amen. So they said, look, I'm going to make you an offer. That's how I show them. It's a wonderful show. And it, it gives you and makes you function with a business mindset. Because business people think a certain way. They're not going to invest in an idea where they believe there is no demand. Because they understand they ain't just in it to make you feel good. These shops are in it to make themselves some money. And I'll deal with that in a few minutes. All right, now listen, remember, you must see yourself as an answer or a problem solver. See, you and I are what? We are answers. We are what? Problem solvers. It has been said, when you see yourself as an answer to a need, a new opportunity is born. Did you get what I just said? When you see yourself as an answer to a need, a new opportunity is born. It's birth. Why? Because you see yourself as an answer. You got to start, stop seeing yourself as just somebody who just exists. Que sera, sera, sera. No, you are an answer. And those who really know you are an answer, they'll love you, they'll value you, they'll cherish everything there is to cherish about you. They'll nurture everything there is to nurture about you. Because they love you for being an answer. They love you for helping them and strengthening them and making their life better. Knowing you has made their life better. I want people that say, hey, knowing Bishop Van Sharp made my life better. All right. I'm going a little bit over tonight because this is business talk. The third thing, which I'll stop with this third thing after I get into it a little richer. The third thing is so important. This one that you really need to establish if you want to be a success in business and anything else. This is key. The third key to be successful in business is self-development and self-improvement. What I say the third key is self-development and self-improvement. You got to understand that whatever you are going to walk off a job and start your own business, you have to read more, learn more, know more. Because why? You have to improve yourself. You have to develop yourself. You cannot be stagnant. You got to keep moving. You got to keep growing. You got to keep developing. Self-development and self-improvement is a key to all facets of life. What did I just say? Self-development and self-improvement is a key to all facets of life. Hallelujah. I don't want to be around people who don't want to develop, who don't want to improve. We want to develop. We want to improve. We want to be better. We want to 
be a better person. Listen, you and I must believe in what we bring to the table. We must believe that we bring something totally unique. This is what business people call the purple cow. Think about it. In other words, if you go to a farm or somewhere and you see a purple cow, your attention will be on that purple cow instead of the other cows. Don't you know if you go to a farm and you see a purple cow, forget about all the rest of them cows, you're going to look at that purple cow. Well, that's what developing yourself and improving yourself is like. You start standing out. You start sticking out. Amen? Glory to God. Come on now. That's why ladies, amen, you should love fixing up, beautifying yourself, taking baths, looking good. Why? Because you want to stand out. Amen? You want to stand out. You must improve yourself. It has been said, if you recommend a book, only 10% of people will buy and read it. That's sad, ain't it? If you recommend a book, only 10% will buy it and read it. In other words, 90% of the people you recommend a book to will not get it. Which means what? 90% of the people you and I are around ain't thinking about self-development and self-improvement. That means what? The average person you around, the way you see them today, they're going to be there 10 years from now. Same stupid talk, same stupid walk, same stupid ideas. I know some guys I left out there in the street. When I was out there in the street, we were smoking dope, drinking wine. They still out there in the street. Almost 60 years old, 65, still out there in the street smoking dope, drinking wine. Ain't changed one bit. Why? Because they ain't reading nothing to improve themselves, to develop themselves. It's crazy to have somebody in jail and think that jail alone can rehabilitate them. Putting the person in jail in prison then because they've been there a long time and going to let them back out on the street, that's crazy. You need to find what have they been reading? What have they been reading while they're in jail? What books have they been meditating in? Because if they haven't changed their mind and the way they think, they haven't improved themselves, they're going to come right back out and commit another crime. Hallelujah. Are oh, you understanding me? Books bring new information. And they bring new ideas. Hallelujah. What did I just say? Books bring new information. And they bring new ideas. It's been said. The test of an educated person is this, is can I entertain a new idea? Can I entertain a new idea? That's why when you get, when a person buy a book, they only read about, you, you call them next week, and they ain't read about two pages of the book, you know what? Their problem is what? They can't entertain new ideas. They ain't ready for new ideas. They want the same old, same old. Same old thinking, same old mindset. Don't want to hang around somebody who can help their life go to another level. They don't want to be challenged in a new way. They're not improving. Self-improvement and self-development makes you a success in business. Glory to God. It's crazy for somebody to come up to me and my wife now and talk about, hey man, you remember we was on Granville Street. We was on Granville Street. You used to preach son, son, son. Oh, look, yeah, that was good. That was, that was then. This is now. Glory to God. I hadn't even wrote a book then. I wasn't on radio then. I wasn't on television then. I am not that same person. I've grown. I've matured. I've developed. At that time when I was there, I was starting out as a pastor. Now I'm overseeing pastors. It's a whole nother level, sir. Hallelujah. Listen at this. Remember, your self-disciplines affect your self-esteem. Your self-disciplines affect your self-esteem. Every letdown affects your personal performance. Self-esteem is one of the keys to high performance. High performance people 
have a high self-esteem. Because when you have a high thought pattern about yourself, it causes you to perform on a high level. The slightest lack of you not doing your best starts to erode the canvas of the picture you are striving to create with your life. So you paint a picture with your life. And the moment you don't do your best, everything you want to give it your best, whatever it is, you want to put your all into it, your best into it. Why? Because when you give it your best, you know then it will help you succeed. But if you're not giving it your best, you're half stepping. Then it's going to start erode the picture that you're trying to paint. I'm about out of time, but I'm going to say this part with you, and I'm going to give you this, and I'll stop. I'll stop. I got to stop. I'll just stop right there. I'll just stop right there. All right, all right. You and I, okay, I can go with this. You and I must have the right skills. You and I must have the right business acumen. The more that you know, the more decisive you can be. What did I say? The more that you know, the more decisive you can be. Are y'all hearing me? See, when a person is indecisive, amen, they get you confused, amen? We need to know what we are about, know what we want to do, know what we want to achieve, know where we want to go, amen? Your wisdom and knowledge helps you make better decisions. What may help you make better decisions? Your wisdom and your knowledge helps you make better decisions. For example, if you want to be a person that own your own car lot and sell cars, you need to know some about that business. What is it like? What what kind of takeaway is involved? All this and that and this and that. Find out. Do all, do your do your homework. Why? Because you got to improve. You got to be a better person. I say this all the time in Newness of Life Christian Center. Amen. When you get better, everything around everything around you gets better. When you improve, everything around you improves. You can't expect stuff around you to improve and you don't improve. Your self-development, your self-growth is important to the success of your business. Amen? For example, you can't come out there trying to talk business and not know how to give a proper handshake. You can't go to no, no business meeting to my, what's up, dog? <laughs> Amen? You can't go to no business meeting without a shirt and a tie on, dressed up, looking like you're going somewhere to happen. I'm talking about you dealing with the corporate America. Amen? Tattoo. Amen. Looking all like you ain't got nothing going on up here. Tattoo. Amen. Shout out to Curtis Bryant. Amen. Good to know you're watching, man. Thank you, sir. He got all these books. Amen. The other day when he came down to church. Shout out. I hope you I hope you don't have this one yet. I think uh we well, we got it. Uh, to it's one more. Yeah, you got it now. Get it all right, on. good. Long distance running, running to receive your pride. Brother Burke, gotta get it, man. You gotta get this book. Erwin Burke, you gotta get this book. Amen. Shout out to Marilyn Smith. Listen at this now. Your wisdom and knowledge helps you make better decisions. Wisdom helps you to be strong and tough in business. What did I just say? Wisdom helps you to be strong and tough in business. Listen at Proverbs 24, 3 and 5. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So wisdom and knowledge help your house to be full up with all kinds of pleasant and present, uh, precious and pleasant riches. A wise man, this is Proverbs 24, look at verse 5. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. That's why we have Bible study. That's why you should keep watching us on Facebook. So you can get wisdom. Wisdom makes you strong. So you can get knowledge. Knowledge helps you increase in strength. Not sound and feeling all good. I ain't talking about emotionalism. We're talking about owning business. I mean, owning property and starting businesses. And you got to approach even the kingdom of God suffers often because people don't have a business mindset. Come to church when they want to. Come to church if they feel like it. Tired when they want to. Tired if they don't feel like it. That's what messes up ministry. Because people don't have 
a business mindset. And it is the most important business in the world. It's the father's business. The father's business. All our board mem members, we chose them because they got a business mindset. Our financial team, we chose them because they got a business mindset. We say, hey, they're going to be good at business. They won't steal. Amen. We got to be looking over our shoulders and say, wait a minute, they're stealing money. I'm the... See, see, folks, they got a business mindset. They, they, they hinder the work of God. They hinder the things of God. You got to have a business mindset. Shout out to Marcus Johnson. All right, Marcus, you know this good to you. I know you hate for me to cut it off. Amen. Shout out to Tasha Battle. Amen. Yeah, if you're going to do business, let's do business. See, business is business. Play is play. Fun is fun. This is business. I tell people, which, well, Bishop, man, y'all to give me that book. Man, this is business. This is about business. If you don't have the 1295, bye, love you. Amen. This is business. Because why? I had to pay for them. I had to pay to get them printed. I had to pay before, before I got them printed. I had to pay the publishing company to even start to work on the book. To submit it. When I submit the book, money I have to money. pay money. That's right. Then to buy the copies of the book, mm -hmm. I got to pay money. Yes, sir. So you want me to give you something free? Look at the mindset people got. Go to Harvest and say, I want a sandwich free. Go to Popeye and say, I want a sandwich free. Go to McDonald's and say, give me a Big Mac and some french fries and a, a drink. They're going to they be, they be hitting that cash register. Nobody hitting that cash register because they know it ain't going to be free. And that's why McDonald's is able to build another McDonald's and build another McDonald's because they understand business. And I want you to understand business. Shout out to Iris White. Amen. I was just talking about her. Amen. And, and her business acumen. Amen. Hallelujah. How she helped a lot of people. Amen. Get jobs. Amen. In the Hallelujah. Because of her expertise. I'm saying in the drive through they make you pay first. Yeah, in the drive through you pay before you even get the product. Amen? Right? That's how certain places are. You pay before you even eat it. You pay before you even go and sit down to your table. Amen? Shout out to Bernice Richardson. All right. Listen, listen. Proverbs 11 and 16. Proverbs 11 and 16 says, A gracious woman retained honor and strong men retain riches. See, strong men. Well, what makes men strong? You think God talking about your muscle? No. Talking about your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. That's what helps you hold stuff together. So I'm out of time. I'm going to talk more about this. I got so much stuff here that will blow your mind as I talk to you about being a success. I got 13 things. That the Holy Ghost gave me. See, this guy, he could be in a book. I mean, I'll tell you, I could, I could just think of so many things that could be in a book right now. Amen. The, I don't know, the, 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 the anointing of a scribe must be on me. Amen. To write. Because I'm telling you, this stuff is loaded. And it's only, again, tune in every Thursday night. Now, every Thursday night, you got to go from 7 to 7.30. But because we're talking about owning property and starting businesses, this is so vital to the black community. This is so vital to the white community. This is so vital to our brothers and sisters who are in Christ. You hear what I'm saying? This is vital. This is what will make the devil mad when black people start owning property. Amen. Remember, just like the nation of Israel were enslaved, had no property, owned nothing. They didn't have nothing in Egypt. They were slaves. But God brought them out with silver, brought them out with gold, helped them borrow the money and stuff, and borrow uh, the gold earrings and borrow stuff from the Egyptians. Then God wiped out their debt by allowing Pharaoh and his army to be swallowed up in the Red Sea. And they were a debt-free people moving into the promised land. And that's what God got for you. It's called promised land. Meaning it's been promised to you. Who promised you some land? God did. God promised it to you. It's in the written word. God promised you land. Don't, see, uh, if you don't believe it, go to Psalms 112, read verses 1, 2, and 3 in your spare time. You will notice 
that one of those verses said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. That was the scripture I stood on years ago to claim a house. I said, wait a minute, God. You said wealth and riches shall be in my house. I don't have a house. I'm staying in an apartment. But you said wealth and riches shall be in my house. That means there's a house somewhere out here with my name on it. And it was. You just got to possess it. You got to claim it. How did I tell you to take it? By faith, by your confession, by your uh, praise, and by listening to God's voice. All of that connects you to the favor of God. And you have the favor of God on your life. Hallelujah. Amen. But normally at 7 o'clock, we start from 7 to 7.30. But because we're teaching you about business, it takes more time. That's why I haven't, I didn't play a song tonight because we want to dive right into it. But my wife and I, we go to uh, business meetings. Amen. Every year we have to go to a business meeting to find out about church law. Because church law changes depending on who's in the White House and all that stuff. And, we, and guess what they do? Amen. They don't play no music. Now. We, you know, they don't do no praise and worship. These are Christian brothers and sisters, but they get right into business. And that's what we're doing on Thursday night, getting right into it. And because we want you to get it, and we want you to be a success at whatever your hands do. Amen. And then on Sunday morning at 10, 15, woo, oh, we talk about big dreams and budgeting for your more season. God wants you to have those big dreams and budget for your more season. Again, amen, this is why that devil, amen, is acting ugly to try to take people out because God wants you to have some big dreams and he wants you to budget for your more seed. It's powerful stuff, amen. Now, if you will know, if you if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to give to it, here's how you do it. First thing you do is you can mail us or write us rather at Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462. Tarboro, North Carolina. Zip code is 27886. That address again is Newness of Life, Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. Zip code 27886. Also, if you would like to give to our ministry, amen, through technology, what you need to do is go to your Give Plus church app. Download the Give Plus Church app. When you download the Give Plus Church app, type in Newness of Life Christian Center. Or you can type in 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up and you can give and sow a seed. Again, we are good ground. The seed will be multiplied. God will give you back a supernatural return. Again, download the Give Plus Church app. When you download the Give Plus Church app, type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center going to pop up and you can give that way. And that's totally to ministry. That is for the advancement of ministry. And again, if you don't know anything about our ministry, we're on several TV stations and we're on, I mean, every day. And then we're on some, amen, three and four times a week. It costs money to do it. But we're doing it. And it's been a blessing to people, mm -hmm. especially during this pandemic. When we're not back in our local assembly yet. Facebook Live, YouTube have been a blessing. But there are other people in our local assembly that are a little bit older. They watch us on television. They get that word. And, and they're able. Radio. Uh, and plus, we're on radio. We're on several radio stations as well. They cost money to be on them. And so your money, not one dime, not one penny will be used. Amen. In for anything other than the advancement of the ministry. Won't go, none of that goes to my wife and I. But if you want to be a blessing to my wife and I, and some of you have, thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Y'all have been a blessing. I appreciate that. Amen. You can uh, go, to go to your cash app and then type in that dollar sign, type in that letter R, and then type in the word determined. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. -E -E it's down there at the bottom of your screen. The dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determined. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. -E -E in fact, we have a CD called Determined. It's a good CD. If you don't have our music project, get it. Listen to that in your house. Listen to that in your car. Listen to that as you drive. Amen. You need to listen to that before they come out with another one. 
songs have already been written. We just got to get together with the singers and sing it and put it out, amen, in wax, amen, so you can have it on a CD. Amen. Thank you, NOLCC, for your faithful giving. Thank you for understanding business. Amen. Thank you for making sure that we are not shut down, that we are able to move forward. A lot of local assemblies, amen, are shutting down, but we are still moving forward because we understand that this pandemic is not forever. It's a temporary situation. We did a whole teaching on that. You can go on Facebook or, uh, or YouTube and listen at that. We talked about a new temple, not a new normal, but a new temple. It's a temporary situation. Also, if you'd like to order our latest book, here it is. It's called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. Listen at me. Don't just read good books and not tell others about them. Listen, you need to read this book called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. Call us at 252 641 zero zero nine eight two five two six four one zero zero nine eight you know they used to say a long time ago if you want to keep something from a black person put it in a book but well, it's a new day you need to rise up and tell that devil he is a lie i'm going to improve listen at this part catch this did you not know one of the most expensive things you have to buy when you go to college are your books your books are two hundred three hundred dollars per semester. I didn't say per year, per semester. Every semester, you got to buy books. And those books are not cheap. Why? Because they want you to invest in your mind, invest in your growth, invest in your learning. $13, $12.95. You spend that as soon as you walk in Olive Gardens. You spend that as soon as you walk in Red Lobster. You spend that as soon as you walk. You're going to spend that and more if you go to Ruth Chris. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. You spend that easily when you go to a movie. Why not invest in your mind? That popcorn is going to be gone. You're going to poo-poo that out. But the book <laughs> is knowledge and information that you can have for a lifetime. Hallelujah. And you can also get our latest book to women. Women. Come on, serious-minded women. Get this book called Women of Substance. Taking New Steps to New Dimension. This book is radical. This book will change your life. If you're a woman, get it, read it. Read it again if you're a woman. Don't read it just one time. Get it out. Read it again. It's like the Bible. In fact, it gives you a lot of scripture and connect you, amen, in many, many ways. It's a powerful book. And then a lot of people are discouraged. They're, they're going through depression. They, they, they really getting down by this pandemic. Amen. Listen, you can encourage them with this little $4 book. This little $4 book. Yeah, $4. Mm -hmm. $4 book called How to Overpower Discouragement. You can help them with this book. And you can get your help with this book. It's a tremendous little $4 book. Just $4. Amen. That can be a blessing to you. In fact, we've given away a lot of them to be a blessing to people. Amen. And a lot of our other books we've given away to just help people. Listen, I Am My Brother's Keeper is a book for men empowering men to take their place. If you're serious about being a man and walking in your manhood, you need this book. It's only $10. It can be a blessing to you. Amen. It's only, a, let me see, it's about, uh, it's some good book, good information here that can be a blessing to you. Amen. Talking about mighty men of valor, how to be a mighty man, four things to help your brother out. Amen. Uh, a whole section in here called Show Thyself Amen. It's a lot of good stuff in this book that can be a blessing to you. And if you're a person that's going through any type of rejection and don't know the blessing of it, you need to get this book called The Blessings of Rejection. We give you 10 reasons why people face rejection, 14 different blessings that come out of it. It can be a blessing to your life. Thank you for watching us tonight. Business men, business women, don't forget, amen, to get in this teaching. And don't you dare miss next week. We're going to go deeper as we talk about point number three, about developing and improving. Amen. We went over time tonight, but it's good. You didn't have no game to watch. Amen. Again, thank God. Shout out to the NBA, the uh, Major League Baseball, hockey, women. all the women, the WNBA. Y'all are doing the right thing. Standing up. Amen. For justice. Standing up. Amen. Because it's time for us to speak up and speak out. Black people, we have nothing to be ashamed of. We are black and we 
did not make ourselves this color. God made us beautiful and we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made and it's time to hold people accountable as, uh, what's the name, John Lewis said, amen, time to stand up and speak up, speak out, amen, in this day and time. Amen, that's right. He talked about that and I believe it's in this time that we do that. So let us make, let us make a difference. Tell somebody about the books so they can get it. Come on, News of Life. Speak up about this book. Tell your family members. Tell them about long distance runner running to receive the prize. We want the prize. Let's go for it in the name of Jesus. Also, uh, don't forget, if you miss it, you can go back over and watch this on Facebook Live as well as on YouTube. You can be blessed by it. Again, next week, same time, same station, same, same place, brother, on Facebook Live <laughs> each and every Thursday. We're talking about owning property. Go get your land. Go get your house, sir. Go get your house, ma'am. Be blessed to the Lord. God bless you.